Hello everyone, Hello everyone. I'm, Alexander. I'm Alexander, I'm part of the marketing and business development team in Imperial Online. Uh, I hope you're having a great event so far and uh, today I'm going to talk about the topic of life operations and why they are important for your game. Just a quick company overview, Imperial Online is the biggest Bulgarian game production company. Uh, it's founded in 2005 and currently it has more than 90 people uh, on staff. Uh, during the years, we have reached over 50 million players with our 27 games and since 2018 we become part of the Steelfront group, which is the biggest group of independent game production companies in Europe. It consists of 15 um, studios spread across uh, Europe, North America, Dubai and uh, actually we have been uh, acknowledged within the group uh, that we are sec the center of excellence in terms of life operations. During our 15 years of experience, we have outlined four uh, major pillars of life operations and those are events, promotions, new content and features and community and problem management. Uh, but the question is, what are life operations and what, why are they used? So, it's basically the management of the in-game player experience over time. You want to better monetize and um, retain and entertain your existing player base uh, and for that to happen you have to implement the four pillars I mentioned. In order to do that you have to evaluate your resources. You have to know who is going to take care of what, how much work is involved in the process itself. Um, you know that development work is uh, quite expensive so implementing new models and mechanics uh, could be very time consuming and uh, bring a lot of additional costs. Uh, do you need external help with, uh, with implementing uh, those stuff or you can do it in-house? Do you have the expertise to do it in-house? Uh, would that impede your team of developing new titles in the meantime? Or basically you are in need of outsourcing some activities? Uh, what is the developer role here in terms of life operations? Uh, as I mentioned, um, Imperial Online as a company is founded in 2005 and it's named after its first product which is Imperial Online the game. Um, it's our flagship title until this day and uh, it's fully developed in-house using our, our technologies, our architecture and that brings us the opportunity to have the full creative uh, freedom and um, the ability to, to create our life operation strategy as well. Uh, Imperial Online is still going strong, strong um, during all those years because of the life operation focus that we, uh, that we have. Uh, the game itself is a free-to-play MMORTS title that is available on web, mobile, Steam and other uh, social platforms. Currently it's localized in 30 languages and the goal of the game itself is to create, a uh, uh, to create an empire from a tiny village and uh, to develop diplomatic relations and uh, follow your troops into battles with other players and uh, basically to become the mighty ruler of, uh, of the realm. Uh, it monetizes uh, through in-app purchases. Uh, those are for in-game uh, items and uh, currency and other monetization mechanics uh, that we've implemented there. Uh, in Imperial we have six main events throughout the year and uh, other minor ones a couple of times a month. Um, and we are using uh, those events in order to hook the players to boost their retention and monetization. Um, and and there, are, there are different types of events. You could set different achievements for a prize. You could set thematic events with gifts for special occasions like uh, anniversaries. Um, or some types of holidays like Christmas uh, that gives you the um, gives you a great opportunity to add uh, different thematic assets and also holiday events are very very pow powerful as uh, they leverage on the player that uh, have more free time to, spay, uh, to, to spend in the game. Uh, another type of of event are uh, tournaments where they uh, boost competition and uh, it's uh, and are uh, really engaging for the for the player uh, for the player base. Uh, it's really important to create a roadmap or 
event calendar in, and to stick to it because that way you are building the player anticipation and it al also makes it easy to request a featuring from your partners uh, when they know in advance for an upcoming event. Uh, base your decisions on, on the metrics that come, come in from, from those events. Uh, you have to follow your metrics for, for each thing you do uh, to see what is working, what is not working uh, with your particular audience, what is boosting the retention, what boosts the payments, uh, see that um, see what works uh, so you could replicate it in the future and uh, see what doesn't work in order not to waste time with uh, ineffective stuff also. Uh, with events come promotions, those can be, uh, could be attached to an event or even be left standalone. Um, those could be bundles of items or something that influences the gameplay like currency, resources, whatever, uh, whatever suits your game the best. Uh, you also could uh, set discounts or price reductions on, on the in-game goods um, that are already available uh, for sale. Um, also, it's, it's important to be uh, for a limited time because that way you're creating a, a feeling of urgency that incentivizes the players to actually purchase uh, and you're not trying to completely change your, your, uh, your uh, pricing strategy. Uh, so it's, it's wise to limit the, 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 the whole promotion uh, length to, to a specific period. Also, we have introduced custom promotions for high volume payers. Uh, those are unlockable packages. Um, for example, when, when, a, when a payer purchases the, the highest, um, no, highest in game package in, in Imperia, they are unlocking another, uh, another one that is even, even higher. Uh, that way, we are incentivizing the players who are paying a lot to pay even more. Uh, you could also um, offer them custom um, uh, custom offers uh, speci for, for specific uh, types of um, high volume payers. Uh, basically, we have a chief revenue officer that is const constant, constantly coming up with prom promotional uh, ideas and strategies for all our games. It's important to introduce also uh, new content and features to make it interesting for the players. Uh, those could be addition of new items, units, some playable features that could complement the gameplay and uh, not changing the core game mechanics. Um, you could even introduce premium features that could boost monetization. Uh, and those premium features uh, could give some in-game advantages to the player, but be careful not to, uh, to ruin the gameplay balance um, after that. Uh, it's really important um, because basically you're, you're uh, giving, the, um, giving the players more opp opportunities to spend their money uh, for for example, for increased uh, rates of gaining resources or population growth or basically whatever works with your game. Uh, I, another thing is uh, to add new game visual assets, such could be uh, art updates, improvements, uh, even changes to the user interface and user experience. Uh, we are actually doing the community and problem management in-house. Uh, we are we are striving to interact with the player base as, as, as much as we can uh, to provide the human touch behind the brand. Uh, that, that's why we are using corporate blog. Uh, we are uh, present in um, all the major social media networks. And uh, this, presence, this presence really helps us to build relationship with the, uh, relationships with the, player, uh, with the players. And um, uh, that, that way we could directly com communicating with them um, to obtain uh, crucial feedback and ideas that uh, uh, often uh, are, are great for, uh, for us to, to fix some problems or um, basically to know what we are doing wrong, what we are doing right. And um, uh, also we are providing support, um, customer support for, uh, for various issues like uh, gameplay related uh, complaints or bugs or 
um, payment issues and so on. Uh, when you are introducing new new things like features, there there always going to be uh, bugs. Uh, so it, it's important to receive the feedback from the players and to fix everything as fast as you can. Uh, another thing that we that we do is uh, we are providing VIP support. Um, the, those are dedicated senior senior agents uh, for the high volume payers uh, because it's important to keep them in your game. Uh, we are providing them with a faster response time because uh, they are spending a lot of money and and it's important for them to be um, to be taken care of and for you as a um, the provider of the game, it's also important to keep them uh, with with your game. But what is the role of the publisher in the in the in the whole situation? So basically, uh, since the beginning of uh, 2020, we started publishing uh, the title Siege World War the Second, which was initially um, initially uh, developed by another studio from Steelfront Group called Simutronics. And uh, we took over the live operations and monetization, and we managed to increase the revenue two and a half times for the, the since since the, the beginning of the year. Uh, our our life of strategy was to keep the authenticity of the IP and boost the performance as much as we can. Uh, we have tried to put uh, to implement different uh, proven methods from Imperio Online um, that have been. Uh, working during the years, but it really uh, was depending um, on the capabilities of the new product itself. We didn't want to um, to rewrite the whole the whole game from scratch. Um, but Siege is actually a, a military simulation strategy game. It is uh, PvP um, where you play one versus one uh, battles with real time players. And the goal is to destroy the enemy base by uh, placing different types of units on the map and they're represented with uh, different types of cards. Um, there are three types of events uh, uh, that are currently in the game. Those are Conflict of Nations. Um, it's, it's only once, um, once per, per season, but it's a, a lengthy event where we base... Um, different nationalities against each other. Uh, we are really trying to uh, to create a feeling of exclusivity because we are setting uh, a national teams with only uh, the top 30 players uh, for the for the country. Uh, they are elected with a qualification phase and uh, it really creates the feeling of, uh, of pride that you are uh, become uh, be that you became part of the of uh, your uh, your national team. Another thing is that really uh, boosts competition where, where we face different nationalities like uh, USA and Russia uh, due to different uh, uh, historic and social reasons or here um, among the, the countries on the Balkan region, you know that we uh, don't really uh, like each other very much. I'm joking, of course, uh, but uh, the, the competition is quite fierce. Uh, another event is um, Alliance Wars, uh, where we try to reinforce the in-clan relationships by setting common goals for the, the clan itself. Um, and uh, basically, we try to, uh, to set different clan achievements for the whole clan as a one unit to, to strive to, uh, to complete them. Uh, another thing is uh, mini challenges. The, those are uh, individual challenges for... Um, for the player in order to have what to do um, uh, constantly. Uh, those are specific battles uh, with, with specific rules that uh, change every, uh, every, with every challenge. Um, uh, in terms of promotions, we are, uh, we are trying to, to come up with daily promotions for the game. Uh, those are discounts for packages for gold and gems. Uh, which are the, the uh, in-game currencies that the game is monetizing with. Um, and we often link them to uh, uh, real-time events like Christmas, uh, uh, St. Valentine's, Black Friday, and so on. Um, and also, it's really important to diversify all, all your promotions. Don't offer the, the same thing too often. Uh, because the players get, uh, get bored with this, uh, try to even change the promotional art that really helps 
uh, in uh, keeping keeping things fresh and uh, uh, incentivize the the players to pay more. Um, we are also setting gifts for inactive players, for players that haven't come in the game for uh, about five days. They are receiving a push notification uh, in order to bring them back and try to retain them for longer. Uh, since we took over the game, we added a, a bunch of new uh, content fe in, and features like veteran cards. Those are units with increased stats. We have added 16 new languages and uh, really tried to um, to update the, the art to make it more more vibrant, to pop a little bit more. Um, and uh, we think that the game um, really seem, uh, looks great uh, currently. Uh, we also are taking care of the community and problem management in-house. We have implemented the best practices from Imperial Online, uh, like uh, live streams, on-season reset, and uh, other major events uh, for additional community engagement. Uh, we have also implemented uh, Discord channel, which was uh, actually uh, Siege was the first game that uh, we we have worked on that had a Discord channel, and uh, we have implemented that this to Imperial Online in order to be updated with the times as well. Um, and uh, I had I had to say this here that it's really better for the company to create all the groups and uh, communication channels um, yourself because um, that way you have more control over the moderation. You don't want to leave your, your fans uh, to create fan pages uh, where you don't have any control over. Um, things could, go, could get uh, really, really messy there. Uh, another thing is that we set metric alarms. Uh, those are to follow irregularities in our numbers, uh, where, um, uh, for example, we have uh, we have set um, set a specific promotion that is going, and it it does uh, it uh, runs for a couple of days, but it it doesn't uh, it suddenly stops uh, stops with um, with payments. And uh, that way we could see and uh, react accordingly to fix uh, if, if anything's bad with the payment uh, system or, or something like this. So basically it's important to have such alarms as well. Uh, what are the outtakes of my talk? Uh, the game should be built flexible, uh, flexible um, with the ability to, to make changes further down the road, um, uh, to help yourself uh, with your, your future changes. Uh, you have to take notice of the feedback of the players, uh, both good and bad. It's really important. Uh, try new things for the game, see what the competition does, and uh, try to implement the suitable features that, that, that they do, or come up with unique ones yourself. Uh, and analyze your metrics um, in order to, to make informed decisions, of course. And last but not least, uh, in, case, in case that the game is developed and published by separate studios, you have to try to, to align your goals in order to create a successful product. Because there are a lot of moving parts in life operations and uh, uh, you have to have very good communication in order to succeed. Uh, thank you very much. This is my presentation. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me. Um, you could also um, uh, reach me on, uh, on my uh, communication channels listed here. Um, I'll be glad to answer everything I can. Um, have a great event. Bye-bye. So, okay, uh, right now is time for questions. Uh, I invite you to type your questions into the Q&A uh, chat uh, for Alexander. Uh, and now, uh, I think you have talked about uh, you have talked a lot about communication between the support team and users. Uh, tell me, please, uh, which is the most popular way uh, to uh, take uh, users' feedback? For example, Facebook channel or Discord or something else, uh, any other public also. Okay, so uh, basically it's, uh, it's great to, as I said, to be present everywhere you can because uh, uh, you can find um, uh, beneficial things to, uh, uh, to read on, uh, among comments on Facebook and in uh, the messages in Discord and so on. Uh, we also uh, receive uh, emails um, on our uh, official support 
support email. Uh, so basically, we are we are trying to uh, to be in touch with uh, with the player base everywhere we can. Uh, we don't uh, only focus on on a certain center certain channel. I think your game is so uh, interesting that I recently downloaded and started to play uh, it right now. So I think it's uh, looks really well. Uh, so uh, do you plan to uh, do some presents for Black Friday, some achievements or some discounts for, for players? Yes, uh, we actually are planning, um, uh, it's called a Super Friday. Uh, which would be, I think, one uh, one week uh, for, I believe it's going to be something like uh, 40% um, uh, discount on, on almost everything. So uh, you can download the game, everybody who, who doesn't uh, have it and uh, uh, make use of, of, the, um, of the discount while, while uh, it's there. All right, uh, looks good. Uh, and I think, um, the third question uh is it possible let's say to uh give some present from player to player for example i would like to make some christmas present for any member of uh, my teammates so can i for example uh buy some goods and transfer it as a gift for another player uh, I, I actually I have to check if that's uh, that's implemented uh, technically. Um, I, I'm sure that you you can send uh, gold in game, so mm -hmm. uh, they could buy uh, different things uh, with that. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, I have to double check on that. Okay, okay.